this is my definitely my first um, business lecture I've ever done. Um, how many of you are have already ha started a business? Yeah. How about have an idea for a business? How many of you have always known you wanted to be an entrepreneur? All right. Well, my answers are a year ago would have been no, no, and no way. Because this is not at all what I thought I was going to do. Um, to introduce myself, I went to BYU. I graduated with a degree in marriage, family, and human development, right up there in business. So, yeah, I know. I emphasized in child development, so that helps, right? Um, and I got married, had kids, and I had no dream of ever doing anything in the business world. Actually, my husband went to school here with business, and um, he always had, you know, he's the entrepreneur. He loves the idea of making his own hours and, and working for what he gets, and I've, I've always been like, wouldn't you rather just bring home a paycheck, a steady paycheck every, every week? You know, you go to work from 8 to 5, and he's like, no, that doesn't interest me at all, and... Um, so this has never really been my goal. But don't stop listening now, because it gets better. Um, so actually, four years ago today is what changed my life. This is my little boy. Um, he was born, like I said, four years ago today. And he was my, he's my fourth child. And I went into the, um, I have, have C-sections, and I went into the C-section thinking everything was going to be fine. And before I was coming out of surgery, they were packing him up. He actually had a, a, a heart condition called hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Has anyone ever heard of athletes that have cardiac arrest on the field and die? Everyone's seen that on the news? That's what he had, but he had it so severe in infancy that it was really dangerous. Um, we, when we finally got to take him home from the NICU, um, the doctor told us, you know, he was in his car seat, and he's there like, by the way, we don't think he's going to survive um, his, to his first birthday. And I was kind of like, what? I, I don't know where, where I was the nine weeks he was in the NICU, but I didn't understand how sick he was. And, but her comforting words were, but he'll go fast. It'll be fast. Not all that comforting. Um, and, and he did, he got really sick. He was only home 10 days and they found out he was in stage heart failure. Um, so we listed him for a heart transplant and actually on Mother's Day he got his heart transplant um, for uh, Mother's Day 2010. Um, I forgot to mention his name's Lion. That's his middle name. Uh, my husband said that that's what he wanted to name him and I'm like, you're kidding me, I'm not gonna name my child Lion. But, um, Maybe it was the drugs from the C-section or something, but I went ahead and went with it. And I love it now. Everyone calls him Lion. Um, and for us, Lion stood for strength and courage, which is what he needed, and, and hope, which is what we needed. Um, so this is him now. Like I said, he, he's celebrating his fourth birthday today. Um, along with the heart transplant, he has a rare syndrome. So he has eight doctors, he has multiple therapies, he has, he's had 11 surgeries already, um, multiple medications every day. And so one night when I was doing his heart rate, on, so I used my cell phone, or you know, my smartphone for the stopwatch and I listened with the stethoscope and, and then I text myself his heart rate and then I get on the computer and I write that down and then when I go to the doctors I print it up. Does that sound like a very efficient way? Probably not, especially since I have three kids that play with my phone, so half my text messages get deleted. Um, so I thought what all entrepreneurs think is there has to be a better way, right? I mean, this is crazy. So I started looking at things and trying to find out if someone had already solved this problem. Um, so I identified, you guys should know this word well, pain point. Um, and my pain point was I need to find a better, easier, more accurate way to take care of my son. Um, like I mentioned, I don't know if I mentioned, but he has a really rare condition. He's actually the only person in Utah with this syndrome. And so every doctor we go to, they're like, oh, I've never heard of that. And so I have to educate the doctors. And so I carry around a five pound binder with me wherever I go. It's seriously five pounds. It's, and, um, and I give doctors research papers. I'm like, okay, this is what we look for. This is what we need to do. Um, 
I'm a big fighter advocacy, so they usually listen to me pretty well. And so I found this pain point. And so a few of the first people I talked to, well, a few people that I talked to, um, I told them about this pain point and what I was going to do to fix it. And they're like, oh, I had that same idea. And I'm kind of like, really? Um, but I found out the difference between an entrepreneur and everyone else is what they do with that idea. Um, yeah, people can have ideas all the time, but it's those who actually do something with the idea. That's what makes you an entrepreneur. When you find that pain point, you find what's gonna solution, what the solution's going to be, and then you go and do it. So, as many of you know, my pain point might be completely different from someone else's. So, a big thing that I needed to do, go do is go talk to people. Go ask people, hey, is this, am I the only one who ha has a hard time keeping up with all this medical demands? So, I went in and talked to a bunch of people, and, and I asked them, you know, is, is this hard for you? Would this make it easier? Um, most importantly, what I did is I listened. Um, and listening was great because it actually grew my idea bigger than I ever even thought. To give an example, I was talking to one of my heart friends. Um, her daughter has a heart transplant too, and I was telling her about my idea, and uh, she's a social worker for autism. And so she was like, this would work great for autistic parents because they, they don't have to track heart rate and temperature and stuff like that like we do, but they have to track behaviors and medications and nutrition and how they interact with each other. And so she's like, this would be great. So she set up a meeting with her autism group um, and I met with the, the CEO of that and, and he loved the idea too. Um, I talked to a fireman um, and he is like, oh, it is a mess. He's like, I go to nursing homes when on a call and it takes them 15 minutes before they can find the people's records and some of the records are handwritten and so we're taking these people to the emergency room knowing they have an allergy but we don't even know what it is and so just talking to people have really um, made my idea bigger than I ever thought it was going to be and it's important too because things that I thought were important when I would talk to people weren't as important to them and they also gave me great ideas on what would be helpful. Um, one of the things that we tra track is medical expenses, which is huge, even for people that don't have special needs kids. And so one of them's like, what about putting a button there if that's tax deductible? I'm like, oh, how easy is that? And what, what a great thing for people to know whether that's ta tax deductible or not. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is not my natural area of expertise. Um, and so one of the pitfalls I have is confidence. I even, you know, when Shauna asked me to do this lecture, I was kind of like, really me? Like, did you run out of everyone else? Because I, I don't feel like I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a mom who, who wanted uh, an easier, simple way for me to take care of my child and to keep him safe. And, uh, you know, she wrote me back saying, you are. You have the passion and the drive and, and you are doing this. And so that's, that's one thing I need to work on. Um, does anyone else have any confidence issues or you guys are all gung-ho entrepreneurs, you can do this? It's hard, huh? It's, and it's not even like, um, you kind of have to throw yourself out there because this is your idea, this is your baby and you're, you're putting yourself out there for people to critique and, and say that's dumb and that they don't need it and it's hard. Uh, um, and so my son, my 10-year-old son, actually said, you know, it's better to try and fail than to not try at all. And so I try to remember that, that no matter what, I'm trying. And like I said, I, I'm, I'm trying to make a difference, and I'm trying to help people. And so no matter what, at least I'm trying. Um, and I read this other quote, so, too. It said, some say risk nothing, try only for the sure thing. Others say nothing gambled, nothing gained. Go all out for your dream. Life can be lived either way, but for me, I'd rather try and fail than never try at all, you see. And I think that, especially for entrepreneurs, you, you have to have that, um, that bit of confidence that you can do this. Um, it's not going to be easy. Um, I, I still struggle with confidence to this day, and I've had a lot of really neat success happen. Um, another thing that was important, so when I first came up with this idea, I thought, has someone already solved this problem? Because why try to solve something that's already solved? And so I looked on the apps, and, um, 
And I ended up downloading six apps to get what I was trying to get with what I needed to take care of my son. And so I, it obviously had not been solved. And I still do research every day, actually. I pop on the app store, type up you know, different things that I'm looking for to make sure that someone else hasn't solved this. And, and also to get some ideas. It's great to see what other people have solved. Because my app, I don't even think I've talked about it much, but it, it's an all-in-one app. So it's for every bit of medical records so that you don't have to have six different apps. You can do all your tracking, everything all in one. And so I look at other people's examples and be like, oh, that's a great nutrition app, and that's a great seizure app. So I can get ideas um, from their examples because what better way to create something than what someone else has, has perfected and done their research on, too. Okay, so this is another fear. And maybe it's because I, you know, stay at home mom and I don't get out of the house much, but networking scared me. My husband's like, you have to do it. You have to get out there and talk to people. And I'm like, do I really have to talk to people? Because I have a hard time with that. Um, but I didn't understand. I, I understood quickly how important it is, but I didn't understand at first. Um, but making those connections is, is really neat when, when someone's like, oh, I can help you there. It, it's really fun to, to make those networking connections. Do you guys like networking? Yes. Yes, my husband loved it too. Um, what, one, a couple of things that I did, this isn't going to help the men in the room, but Women's Tech Council is a great place. They have seminars all the time, and it's a great way to meet other women in, um, in entrepreneurship and, and technology. Um, Startup Grind is also very cool for women, too, because there's like you and like 30 guys, so it's kind of funny because there's not very many women out there. Um, but those, I found those are really a great way to network and to, to learn what other people are doing and their successes and, and fails. Um, what better way to learn about other people's um, failures than, than to talk to them and learn from them? Um, so the first few people I talked to were obviously not real business people because they're like, watch out who you tell. You know, don't, don't tell people what you're trying to do. And that really scared me because I really didn't know what I was doing, especially when I first started. And so I was like, okay, I can't tell anyone, but how's this going to work if I don't talk to people? And so I would have to just tell you, you know, you have to talk to people and tell them your ideas. You know, be smart with who you talk to. Um, one of the, my husband always laughs at me because I don't have that many bad experiences, but one of my not great experiences was I went and talked to, uh, and I wasn't even trying to get capital, I was just talking to a venture capitalist to get ideas, and, um, and I just didn't feel comfortable telling them the idea. For one, I found out that they have an app kind of similar to this, but theirs isn't very good. Um, and so I, she, when I was talking to her, she kept trying to ask me questions, and I just really didn't feel comfortable, and, and so I left that meeting thinking, oh, that was such a bad meeting. Like, why did it go so bad? And so, you know, be, just be careful who you talk to, but you have to talk to people. Um, no one can help you unless you actually ask. Oh, I turned it off. Oh, there we go. Um, so I have some really neat experiences when it comes to asking for help. Um, I think maybe it helped that I really was new to this this business and entrepreneurship. So um, I, I asked a lot of people for help. Um, one of the people I met in the Women's Tech Council, um, we, we ended up meeting. We're actually going to meet again next week. Just that she's a successful business person. She's been there and done that. And so she's kind of helped me mentor through this and, and different ways to talk to people and really gave me the confidence I needed to keep going with this. Um, and then also, I, I love this experience. So has everyone, has anyone heard of the Outlet Baby Monitors? They were actually developed at BYU. So I had read about their story on one of my heart pages. And so they designed this, this really neat sock that goes on a baby. And it's a pulse ox. And it alarms, um, one of the big risks for babies is SIDS. And so it alarms the, the iPhone and stuff when the heart rate or the temperature or um, oxygen drops high or, or temperature goes too, too low. Um, that was backwards. 
So if oxygen and heart rate go, if they go too high or low, if they don't stay within the bounds. And so I saw him on LinkedIn and I, um, con what do you do the connect? Is that what you call LinkedIn? Okay. And then I wrote him a message thinking, oh, this isn't going to go anywhere. But it was really great. He actually called me back and um, I got to tell him my idea and he told me more about his company and, and we've been working together ever since. Like they've been a great help trying to get um, contacts for me together and um, I had no idea that he would ever write back or anything. So reach out to people that are trying to do similar. Their mission was the same as mine, to keep babies safe, to reduce stress of parents. And so I thought, oh, this would be a good, good person to talk to because we have the same mission. Um, also, what an amazing program you he have here. There are tons of resources, um, successful people that want to help you. Um, and all the programs here are really designed for your success. Um, one of the first people I talked to was actually Shauna. And like I said, my husband went to school here and he's like, you have got to talk to Shauna. She is amazing. And so um, he sent a message to her and, and then I got to meet with her. And it was, it was great. It was great to meet with someone who has success in this field. And um, also, like I said, I had lacked a lot of confidence. And so when people are telling you, you can do this, you're, you know, you have the passion and the drive, you can do it. And it's very helpful. Um, oh, I'm going backwards, that's why. It's scary, I have a technology company, huh? And I'm having a hard time using this. Um, so, one of the things I'm doing right now is Indiegogo campaign. Has anyone done any crowdfunding? You did it? Were you successful? You it. Oh, I might need to talk to you. No, I'm just joking. Um, <laughs> hey, successful, successful. They, the, the rate of success on these campaigns is not high. Um, I know some of the people I had first talked to about that are like, Oh, you just throw up a video and everyone pledges and it's easy. Is it like that? No. No. <laughs> it's a lot of work, huh? Yeah, it is a lot of work. Um, and actually, you do a lot of work before you start it. You have to have things really rolling before you go. And so, um, is anyone thinking about running a, one of those campaigns? Yeah. Well, since he's done it, I'm going to have everyone attack you <coughs> after class, huh? But talk to people that have run successful campaigns because that's who you need to talk to, to, to know what to do beforehand. And um, they can give you a great idea. Like one of the things, I wish I would have reached out to more people before I started because I had already made my video and done stuff before I had reached out to people who had done one. And I wish I would have done my video a lot differently. Um, and... So yeah, I'm in the middle of one right now, and it is a lot more stress than I had ever imagined. I'm not a huge fan of MLMs, and I really feel like an MLM right now, like going after all my friends, like, you know, because I want people to share it and to, to pass on the information. Um, so, so like I said, reach out to those who have ran successful campaigns and ask them what they did. Um, one of the other things that a couple of the people that I've talked to have done was um, pass on their help me with contacts and different people to reach because you have to reach out to people. Um, and again, it's not just throwing up a video. Um, strategic partners. Okay, this is where I am loving entrepreneurship. This is so much fun. Um, actually, the, the first one that I met, I was coming out of Shauna's office and we had just talked and we ran into a couple of people and she said, okay, tell them your story. And so I told them what I was trying to do and my idea. And you have to realize this was really kind of, um, it was still a big concept at that time. There, there wasn't, I wasn't working with anyone. It was just an idea that I wanted to do. And, and, uh, and one of the guys that we ran into was like, that is so funny because I own a technology company and we're looking for a medical app. And so the next day he set up a meeting with his partners and I, um, and I went and I pitched to them. And I, probably looking back on it, I probably, I wish I would have recorded it because it was probably a really bad pitch because it was my first time ever doing it. And it was like 
45 minutes long and they're like, you have 15 minutes and I took like 45 minutes. And so, but one of the things that, and Ryan Baco is the one who is the CEO, is he said, I saw your passion and through your passion I could see the need for this app. And so, not only when you pitch to people, they're not just accepting your idea or your concept, they're accepting you because you're the one who's gonna be pushing this. Um, and so I was able to do that. And like I talked about Kurt, um, we're actually gonna work on some things in the future because again, he, he saw that passion and that connection and that desire that I want to help other people. And, and they have that same desire. Um, so this is where I really started to feel like I am an entrepreneur. Um, I always just tell people, you know, I'm just a mom trying to do this, but that's not true. I am an entrepreneur and I'm gonna work hard and I'm gonna get these done. And that's one of the things Ryan always tells people because we, we have a meeting and we're like, okay, you do this and I do this and, and I go home and I get it done and I send it right to him. He's like, we just, no, you have time to do this. And, and so he saw how hard I work and how much I want this to come true. Um, like I said, this app is gonna make a huge difference in my life. And so I wanna do everything I can to make it successful. And I'm seeing that, I'm sure that's the same with some of the ideas you guys have. Like, it is a pain point in your life, and so you do want to make a difference. So again, you just never know what reaching out and talking to someone's gonna lead to. All right, so these are the lessons I have learned and am still trying to learn. Um, to believe in myself is a big one. Um, I still struggle that with that every day. The same with I'm an entrepreneur. Um, and then my son's lesson is better to try and fail than to not try at all. I'm not really into the failing part. I'm not gonna let this fail, but um, at least I'm trying. Another thing that I've learned is, and for those of you who have started businesses, it is a roller coaster. Did you guys have ups and downs, those who have started? Yes. And you think you're climbing this biggest hill because you're just doing so great. And then what happens when you get to the top of the hill? There's more of them. There, there's more of them. And you go down sometimes and you go up. And it is a roller coaster. Um, my husband always says, stay even keeled. Just don't get so excited and don't get so down. And I'm like, how do you not? Like, I am going to get excited when great things happen. And it's going to be hard for me when, when things don't exactly go my way. And so another thing with that, though, is to, to not wait for someone else to push you up. You know, you need to be the one. If you go down that roller coaster, you need to be the one that goes out there and gets your roller coaster back moving up the hill. Only you can do that. And don't, don't let the, the pit fill falls and stuff tear you down because you've come so far already. And so you can come back up. Wow, I was a lot faster than I thought I would be. Did I talk too fast? I don't know. Well, I guess we have some time for questions. Uh, I got a good question. Yeah. Okay, so I actually don't fully understand like the whole breadth, like the depth of your products. Like, is it an app? Is yeah, I guess like, I probably should have explained that better, is huh? Like an app, like on a like a device, like a smartphone app, or like right. a computer or something. Because I tried looking it up, on like Lionheart. I know. It's not there yet. We're doing the crowdfunding. Because, like, you already did. I was like, what's that like? No, it's... like, some rapper or something. No, it's not. It's not in the iStore yet. Um, we are going to finish Indiegogo at the end of this month, and then development's nine <coughs> weeks, and then... So what exactly does it keep track of? Because I have a, a, a medical condition, and I'm interested in... And it sounds interesting to me, like maybe it can help me keep all my files and stuff like in one place, maybe like x-rays and stuff, I don't know. Everything. Oh, so really? it's really? a huge app, um, and so it, it actually has different modules. And so the, the great thing about it, so you can store all your medical records there, all kinds of tracking. I don't know if I mentioned, but my son has a feeding tube, and there is no apps out there for feeding tubes. And so I have to keep track of his calories and his fluids and, and make sure that he has everything. Oh, the dietary app, too has everything. So tracking, there's all vital signs. Um, there's also um, medical events, so seizures, migraines, chronic pain. Um, and then also it tracks uh, behaviors, 
How nutrition. Did you adapt, um, uh, was it your vitals? Um, we're working on some technology right now to make that easier, but right now you would enter it in. So I listened to my son, I'd enter in his heart rate, and then it would download directly into there. Also, all kinds of medical contacts. Everything you would need for your medical history would be in there. You see, and that's very, that's very important to someone like me, because, well, first of all, I'm, I don't know, retarded. I can't keep all of my life to the papers, you know, medical papers, you know, your big five-pound thing, and that's just like, I, I, I'm, I don't know, I can't do that. But something like an app and having access to that, you know, because I have this with me all the time. You always yeah. have, yeah. So, yeah, that would be very helpful. I go to the doctor's office and I can educate them about, you know, oh, my bones and such and such. It's important, um, and that's surgery, and everything. everything. <laughs> um, just my son actually had surgery on Tuesday, and he has a really small airway. airway. And so one of the important things that I always do is I have this note with, for the anesthesiologist that says this is the size tube that you put in for his breathing tube. And, and it, I'm very organized, and it still took me ten, you know, five minutes to find that one piece of paper. So that's what would be great about the app is just push the buttons, and it goes directly to all your... And x-rays, take a picture with your camera, download them directly into your imagery folder. Uh-huh. So is this app for personal use, or are you going to create an app also where doctors can also sync with the app so then they can download your we, information? We are working on all that stuff, too. That is going to be phase two. Like I said, talking to other people, it originally just started as a personal app, to be honestly. It was a personal app for me to make my life easier. And then I found out how many people could use this app. And then I talked to doctors and stuff like that and how great it would be to be able to, to send in all this information before you go to the doctors, have your questions ready and, and everything. So there is lots of phases to this app, so I'm so excited. Yeah. This is like kind of a but with your son, did you not know before he was born that you have that condition? Not at all. So can they not tell? I don't know how they couldn't tell. He got a, he got an echo, he got a, I had an ultrasound two weeks before I had him. And his heart was like this big, and it should have been that big. So actually, a lot of not to scare anyone who hasn't had kids, but there's a lot of. Yeah. I, just had a, I had a baby at ten months old, and I was paranoid about that, and so I just I'm amazed that they couldn't tell. Yeah, there's a lot of things that they miss, and so again, I probably shouldn't say that to a bunch of college kids that hasn't had kids yet. <laughs> so I know my poor CEO uh, Ryan. He he's not married and doesn't have kids yet, and. He's like, yeah, I'm never going to have kids now. I'm like, sorry, stop talking to me about all this stuff. So it's, it's fun. But, um, and did they see there was a reason for it? His syndrome. His syndrome had caused his heart condition, and all of his other conditions is from his syndrome. So, But he's doing great. He loves life. He is the happiest kid ever. So, yeah. So I would ask, I think there's a big disconnect for a lot of people that think of themselves don't think of themselves as entrepreneurs between, oh, that would be a cool app. Yeah. How do I develop that app? And so I would like to know how you kind of got to the point of, I don't know, building a team, finding developers, whatever else was in there that like, it was like, oh, that would be nice versus I can do this. You know, I have always been a really go-getter. Um, my husband actually reminded me of this yesterday. And so for me, just, just having the idea wasn't enough. And I was, um, and a lot of, like I said, I just went and talked to people. You know, I ran into Ryan, and they, they loved my idea, so I partnered with them to develop the app. It's still only me. I, I still own 95% of my company, and then they own 5%. Um, so I don't really have a big team right now. I, I'm really doing it all on my own, um, which is a little hard. I, I, wish I, I wish I had a whole team working with me, but... Um, so I guess that's what I was trying to say with the difference between a regular person and an entrepreneur is one who's going to has this idea and goes and gets it. And to be honest with you, people just kind of wanted to help. And, and I talked to people and they, they wanted to, they said they saw my passion and the need and they, they wanted to be part of this team. So does that answer your question at all? Yeah. Probably not. So. I was going to say, I think I admire your As the need came for you, you realized there was nothing out there. So now, sitting in this class, we can all see this huge, huge market for a village. Yeah. The potential is probably limitless, really, because if you get into the doctor's office, they can have all the things that they're all patients. 
Yeah, and that's, I mean, that's going to be a little bit further. That's going to cost money, lots of money. Like this app I can raise, hopefully raise the funds for, but that's going to be some investors and stuff like that. So I really need to get everything in line. You really don't want, from what I understand and what I've read and talked to people, you know, like you really want to get kind of things in order before you bring in investors and stuff because right now my idea is still a concept. And to, for investors, it, it's risky. But if I can prove that there's a need and a want and people are using this, then it's not going to be as risky for them. So that would be my next goals. Um, having all your best stuff in place, what kind of security measures do you have or have planned to have so that? HIPAA that is very, very strict. And so our first round, um, what it's going to focus on is your personal records. So once you get your medical records, you can really kind of do whatever you want with them. And so you can put them on there. Again, one of the things about this app is you download which features are applicable to you. So if you don't want to keep your medical records on there, you don't have to. But it is secure. It, we are HIPAA compliant. And that's what's great about partnering with a company that, that knows, because I don't know HIPAA, and HIPAA's crazy amount of regulations. And so partnering with someone who knows how to do it, it is, was very important to me. And so we are HIPAA compliant, and, um, but we can't download direct, like we can't go back and forth with doctors directly, like they can't send the medical records directly to the app at this time until we get more. But it's password protected and everything. So you say the, mop, the, the app is like it's modular? It's right. So why, why did you decide to go with that instead of just you know having the app and then it downloads the, everything? Because it would be so much stuff. There's 11 different things to track, and not everyone needs that. So to, to reduce on bulk. Right. And, stuff. and and to make it more applicable to everyone. Um, there's a lot of people that just 70% of the population in the United States takes medication. So even just to to hit that part that don't need all the tracking and all that, but need a way to keep track of their medications and how to order them and alarms for ordering them. Oh, it's a, it's alarm, feature. alarm, lots of alarms. Um, I could probably talk an hour about just, it's, I got a patent on it and it's 27 pages of what this app can do. So it is huge. And so I wanted to make it easy for people to use. So if you don't need a feeding tube nutrition app, why would you want it on your phone? So, so a lot of apps that, you know, people come up with an app idea or, or whatever, a lot of apps you find all of the story was like, oh, this is great. And it comes down, but it's like really bulky. You know, you get it, it's like it has all this junk you never touch, Yeah. you know. So, you know, the good and scary thing about me, this is really scary, is my four-year-old teaches me how to use my iPhone. <laughs> and so for me to de be designing this app, it has to be pretty simple because, like I said, she would have to run it for me. So, yeah, he somehow downloaded uh, a direct link to YouTube so he can get Curious George directly. I'm like, how did you even do that? I can't even <laughs> hardly text. So, any other questions? I gotta say, it's quite inspiring where you come from, from the background of the traditional entrepreneurship flow. Uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah. You should be proud of what you've done. Um, but my question is, um, Alcat, are you looking to partner them in the future to have um, their data automatically go into yours? I definitely want to. Um, one of the big things that I use for my son's medical records is my health. So I would love to be able to partner with different places to try to make getting your medical records um, on there easier. So, and again, it, it's a matter of proving to these people that I have a user base. So when I get that user base, then I can hit insurance companies and different EHRs and, and everything. So that's, that's definitely one of my next goals. I'm just kind of curious to see what you're planning on doing when it comes to like once your like children become 18 years old and all of a sudden they have their own rights to their own information and their parents have to ask the doctors kind of thing with another HIPAA uh, rule, how, are, how would that transfer? Like all of a sudden like, oh, your son is now 18 years old, you no longer have all this information well, on Well, I'm them. actually, work, so I don't know if I mentioned this, but I, when I was looking for people to talk to, I have been talking to every group of people I can find. And one of the groups is people with teenage kids with medical conditions. And so the, the thing that, is, um, that I implement into my app too is, is that the teenagers have their own login and their parents have their login so they can work with the teenager and teach them how to take care of the medical 
conditions and stuff so that the, the parents still have the account manager position, but the kids start to learn how to track their own things, how to order their, their stuff, and so that the transition will be easier when they become adults. So that's a huge part in the medical. Are you still in crowdfunding right now? I or am. Did you already start it? Okay. I'm Do you have an, an expectation for the release date? When the app's done? We are hoping crowdfunding ends at the end of this month, and then we need nine weeks to develop it, and then we have beta testing. So I put July as my release date. So, plus, if you do crowdfunding, make sure you like, I've seen this a lot of times, uh, we want the app to come out in May, but we don't want people to like get mad and start saying it. So push back your release date quite a bit so that, what do they say, over, no, under, under promise, over deliver. So that's what we're trying to do. Any other questions? Yeah. Tech Vitals. Kickstarter does not allow any medical. They don't allow medical. They don't allow baby. They, they don't allow a lot of stuff. Kickstarter was what we originally wanted to do because it has a lot more. People know Kickstarter a lot better, but we couldn't get on Kickstarter, so we went to Indiegogo. I've been on KSL. I got to do Browser 5.0. Um, I was in the Daily Herald last week, and all that is me. I, I'm the PR person, so <laughs> which uh, it is hard. I, like I said, it would be nice to have a whole team, but as of right now, I'm doing everything myself. So if anyone has any PR ideas, you can come talk to me afterwards. No, I'm just joking. John? Okay. Indiegogo in general or her page? So Indiegogo and then the pocket position is what it's called. Someone had a question. Yeah. So there is going to be a free version of the app. Um, for anyone who has any medical expenses knows it is crazy expensive. We just paid off 10000 and we have about 20000 more to pay off. So even, you know, $20 for apps is, or for anything, is, is really hard for people with medical conditions. So there's always going to be a free version, but the, um, the more customizable version is going to be under $5. So we're hoping with advertisements and, um, and stuff like that that we can be able to make this. And like I said, I have a lot of other stuff in the midst that could make more money, stuff with doctor's offices in place, but I really have a hard time charging people that do whatever they can to stay afloat a lot. No, um, I have a nonprofit. Um, I have medical binders that I, I do for a nonprofit. And with a nonprofit, you have to have two other board members. And so you actually don't own anything. So for me, I wanted to be able to own something. And so that's why I didn't set it up as a nonprofit. I wanted that ownership. And I could absolutely be wrong on that. Am I wrong? Uh, you know what? Oh, my video? Yeah. Is the phone? Oh. Wait, is it called Lionheart or is it called the Pocket Physician? So Lionheart is my company, uh -huh. and then the Pocket Physician is the app, because my son's Lion's Heart. So. Yeah. Lionheart? Yeah, no, no, the pocket position. That was one of those late night while I was trying to go to sleep, it came to me.
So do you want to have any questions while we're trying to get the, yeah? Um, I'm not very familiar with Indiegogo. How does it work when you fund them? Do you get like a share of what you invest or is it just like donate money? You don't? You get, it's just like Kickstarter, so you get a pledge back. So anyone who donates $5 will get the pro version of the app when it comes out. I think, I forget, $75 is a t-shirt in the pro version. So it's, it's just like Kickstarter, but a little less popular. And there's a lot more on Indiegogo, so it's hard to get. So you get those little perks and, uh, mm -hmm. for your donation. Right. Well, it seems right. like it's doing pretty well for granted that you just started this month. We started 10 days ago, and we have 25 days left. So we're trying. <laughs> I'm pushing hard. So. Um, with that too, uh, my husband sent out some emails to people like, um, and people, you know, sponsored the app, donated a thousand dollars to sponsor it and stuff. Really? So, why? What's the perk of sponsoring the app? Their names on it, and so, and they just like the story. So it's actually uh, a a U R P. It's my husband goes and donates blood there all the time. So. You want to do the smallest goal you can possibly do. Um, so $8,000 will cover the development of the iOS, and then we also have um, stretch goals, and that will cover the Android version of the app too. So, but you don't want to do like, because what happens if you don't hit your goal is they take 9%. If you hit your goal, they take 4%. Or you can do it so whether if you don't hit your goal, you don't get any money. So I wanted to do the least actual amount, but still be able to deliver the product. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh, are you willing to give away non-voting activity for funding? Do what? Are you willing to uh, give non-voting uh, non activity for funding? Non-equity? So non-voting. Non-voting. Non yeah. Oh, you guys are going to have to um, educate me on that. So. Oh, like an angel investor kind of thing? Yeah, I definitely am into that. Again, I, I wanted to kind of prove my concept first and then and look into that. But I, am, I want this app developed, so I am open for anything as long as someone doesn't take my company because it's kind of my baby. So... Some of the, the, some of the things I'm going to be doing this summer is actually going, I was invited to speak at some medical conferences, and so I'm going to go speak at those medical conferences. Um, and then just, I have a bunch of Facebook groups and stuff like that, so I haven't really thought of the PR too much. There's going to be a free version, but it's going to be a lot less customizable. So less features, less customizable. Right, right. Thank you.